Saul Kirsch here with Double Alpha Academy and today I'd like to show you the process of fitting a Alpha X or Race Master insert block. Now the first step of course is to make sure that you've chosen the correct insert block for your gun type and if in doubt check our website or email us for more information. But often you will find with some gun types that a minimum amount of fitting may be required. You need to bear in mind that there are differences in the frames of the guns being made. There are different generations of frames. In some cases, some of the plastic frame manufacturers have several molds in use. Most of the gun manufacturers do not consider the dimension of the trigger guard to be the most critical dimension on their design. And in some cases, it's something that varies from model to model or generation to generation as it feels, as they feel, it has no impact on the performance. For the Alpha X or Race Master insert blocks to function correctly, it is important that you have a precise fit to the front trigger guard uh, of your pistol. So when you get the correct insert block and you try the fit to your gun, you may find that it is a little bit tighter than you would like it to be, as is the case here with this replica Airsoft gun. Uh, this Glock Airsoft is made slightly larger than the current frame that's in use so when I try to insert it it is tighter than I'd like it to be also the fit to the slide lock tooth doesn't seem quite perfect and I can see that it's not fully engaging the way I would like it to do now you might see this on uh, some Zig models you may see it on Glocks occasionally you'll see it on some of the 2011s as well where a little bit of fitting is required and that's what I'd like to show you uh, how you can do and custom fit your insert block to your pistol the first step, of course, is to dismantle the block. You start by removing the M3 screw at the back. The hex key required for that is part of your kit, the 2.5mm screw. This is an M3 screw. Once that is out, in order to remove the slide lock, you need to remove these two pins which are holding the magnetic wedge. You'll need a punch. And easiest would be to knock them in from the front towards the back. Keep your finger on the wedge as you knock out the second pin because the magnets are rejecting each other and they will push that wedge out, clear out of the block. Now, once you remove the wedge, you will see the two small 10 millimeter round magnets which make that insert move up and down. Now these two magnets should they come out of the pocket and you in assemble one of them upside down, the holster will not function correctly. These two magnets are designed to be assembled rejecting each other so that as the slide lock slides past the wedge, it creates these two distinct positions. It's a good habit as soon as you open the holster up to use a marker just to make a dot or a line on those magnetic faces so that should the magnets fall out of the pockets, which can easily happen, you'll be able to put them back with the right orientation. So, now your insert block is completely dismantled. There's no need to dismantle the safety lever usually. And the first thing to address is the tightness of the slot or the fit of the width of the block to the trigger guard. Now on this airsoft block, I can feel that the tension is a little higher than I'd want. It's a tight fit going in and I'd like it to enter smoothly and loosely on the insert block. So I'm gonna remove a little bit of material from the side of the insert block. Now, an important note is you should always remove the material from the outer side of the insert block, not from the inner side where the safety lever is assembled. There is a reason for that. It relates to the geometry of the slide lock and how it works as it slides up and down. So you should always remove from this side, even though, especially on the Glock insert, it is the thinner side of the two. I'm going to remove just a little bit of material from here. This particular model insert block is open from the back. So it's very easy to make this modification using a flat file. I can lay the block flat and using the file, I'll run over the surface until I've removed enough material. I can then use some fine sandpaper to finish it off so I get a nice surface finish. If the insert block is closed on the back, as is the case with the 1911 and several others, you can still use the, front, the flat file from above or it may be easier then to transition to a Dremel using a larger tip than this one here, you can remove the plastic working from the front and slightly widen the slot of the insert block. Once that has been widened enough, you should get to a position where the gun will enter smoothly and loosely into the insert block. This is the type of fit that you want, completely loose, 
without the slide lock assembled. That is step one. Once you've achieved this loose fit, you can then address fitting the slide lock. Now, the slide lock needs to be tested and fitted while in the block. There's no point holding it in your hand on the trigger guard because the angle and position may be different than how it functions in the block. So you want to insert that, hold it in place with your finger or thumb so that you can slide it into position upwards, seat the gun in, and then take a close look to try and see where the contact with the trigger guard may be a little wrong, where it may be a little bit too tight. In this particular case, it's a little tight. The contour seems exactly right. The fit to the trigger guard, the shape is exactly right. This airsoft replica is true to form of the real Glocks, but it's slightly wider by just a tenth or two, so I'm getting a little more friction than I would like as this slide lock tooth engages with the trigger guard. So what I'll do then is, using my Dremel, remove a small amount of plastic and it is of course easier and faster to remove the material from the upper tooth rather than the lower tooth which will be a higher surface to work on. This upper tooth is usually four millimeters in height and you can run your Dremel along that area there just gently removing just a little bit of material. Do this slowly and step by step. Do not remove too much material. If you do remove too much, the gun will become loose and will tend to rock in the holster. Once that's been done, the only solution is to replace the slide lock. Should you need a new slide lock, contact us and we will help you out with that. But when removing the material, be patient, remove just a hair of material at a time and check your fitting again. Very little was required there because this fit was fairly good. Now, that's a better fit than what I had before. I think that's still just a hair tight. I'm going to take that out again, go back to my Dremel, increase the speed a bit. Again, don't rush this step of the fitting because removing too much material will be a problem. Okay, now that's perfect. I've got a really good engagement now. The gun is completely stable. I've got no movement, no rocking between the pistol and the insert block and it engages nice and smoothly. So at this point, I'm happy with the fitting of the slide lock. I did the fitting of the block earlier and I'm ready to reassemble. Make sure your magnets are in position. Make sure they're in the right orientation. In this case, they didn't come out of the pocket, so I have no problem there. I'm going to push that wedge into place. The pins can be knocked in from the back. You really only have to knock them far enough in so they're flush with the back of the uh, holster body. If you allow them to protrude out, it will create a problem when you insert the block into the holster. Once the wedge is in place, the final step is putting that M3 screw back into the back of the, of the insert block. Now this screw is here in order to allow you to activate the slide lock externally should that become necessary. If for any reason the slide lock is in the down position and you need to holster the gun, it may be difficult to reach in and lift that tooth upwards. On some models, that slot is a lot narrower than it is on the block. That little screw head protrudes out the back of the holster and it's there to allow you to lift the slide lock up externally should that be necessary. So now that we've reassembled our insert block, the slide lock is back in place, the wedge is in place, the magnets are there, the pins are holding it all together. This is now a custom fitted insert block, custom fitted to this particular Airsoft replica Glock, and it will give me a very smooth and easy holster and reholstering. Drawing the gun out of this holster now will be perfect. It'll be a quick and smooth release. The safety is functional, holding the gun in place. That cannot come out when engaged. When the safety is unlocked, no effort at all is required, and that is a custom fitted insert block designed for this particular uh, airsoft replica. So those are the steps and that is the process for custom fitting your Alpha X or Race Master insert block. Remember to take your time and do it carefully. Uh, remove first the material that's required for the fitting of the width of the slot. 
Later, as a secondary step, address the fit to the slide lock. Do that one after the other and you should have no issues. Should you need any further advice or support on fitting your holster, you can contact us through our websites.